All right. So when we last met, I gave you the foundation, a uh, bit of a bit of which we talked about the project, uh, how we define a project, and then we looked into the uh, number of ways how we can manage a project. It depends if it is a complex project, we manage it in a agile fashion, or if it is a straight. So when we last we met, more I gave you the foundation, a uh, bit of so a bit of which we talked about the project, going with the with the same pace as we were proceeding with. So not only this, we talked also about the project life cycle when it comes to a uh, IT project. So we try to understand that. Uh, uh, there is a way to deliver a project as a whole, and it just requires us to iterate one time from uh, planning uh, straight away to execution and then delivering as one big chunk uh, in the end, a big software. Uh, if we talked about the phases, then it will be a phase by phase approach. We finish the requirement phase, then we jump into the design phase. We finish the design phase, phase then we jump into the development phase, and then so on we test and then launch the product. Um, if it is, if it is uh, a complex project, or a multi-phase project, we, we can say it can be um, it can be a project where the requirements are not clear on the day one. Then we divide the project into smaller iterations, and then we say, okay, let's develop the things that are clear, and let's plan for those uh, those things which we can deliver. And with these things are very clear, so we can plan our resources around those things, and then we deliver those things, and then we keep we leave the product uh, owner or uh, the customer to uh, continue to wish and continue to dream and. Uh, bring about more features till we will deliver the, the what is what is very clear to us today. So that is more iterative approach, and we talked about it, and we call it uh, we call it agile approach. And uh, where we have two weeks of iterations, we can name them iteration, or we can name it sprints. Um, a sprint is a acronym which is uh, given to us by an agile framework, which is called Scrum. Scrum is quite famous framework in the agile methodologies uh, that we will be learning through. So we can call it iteration, we can call it sprint. Um, but it's two to four weeks of maximum. It can be four weeks. It can be one week. It can be two weeks. Uh, smaller is better. All we need, we need a working feature. We need to deliver a working feature, and uh, we get a feedback on that working feature. If we need to change it, we can take it the same feature into the other iteration, and we can continue to enhance it, or we can take up another feature and implement the product on top of the previous features and feature after feature. So, which gives us some understanding of iterative and incremental. So, when we say agile, agile itself is incremental iterative as well as incremental way of developing the product so so this is what we discussed lastly i just want us to uh, to make make this thing very clear uh, that we have predictive approach predictive uh, approach of project management or development life cycle when when the conditions are that a uh, single delivery is required. Okay. And then we are saying that scope is fixed, scope is known and fixed. Okay. And then we can say uh, the variables are time and cost, which need to be estimated, which can be estimated on day one. Or not, maybe it can take. Uh, sometime a week or month, but we can do that. For the full scope, we can estimate how much time is required and uh, how much cost will be required. So we can have um, single delivery. We can have single delivery as well. Uh, and we can uh, consider a project. Uh, let's say it's a construction of a housing complex and it has a residential tower. It has park, it has shopping center. So it's a five-year project, let's say and it has three or five big deliverables. So we can split this project into multiple phases. Uh, but still, we are talking about the delivery that is um, single delivery for the whole complex. However, we can say that we have a year, a phase of a project in which we deliver a residential building, which can run for a year, and then another phase of the project, which can be for another six months, we will deliver a shopping mall, and uh, within the same complex or within another six months or a year, we will deliver the part or a parking lot or a mosque, whatever, or a church, whatever is uh, part of the scope. So the thing is, I'm just uh, building up, building up uh, one more type of project approach, which is which is phased approach, phased approach, okay, where we do have single delivery, uh, but we have different phases of six to eight months. So phase projects, we can have scope is scope is partially known, partially known because we know. Uh, or maybe scope is known scope is fixed for the full housing complex 
but uh, but we split the whole project into smaller three or four three or four uh, projects and we do sequential management of these phases so phase one phase two phase three so we may we may have uh, similar scope and these conditions but uh, here we have an option we can say all the phases will run in sequence so that will be a sequential based approach and all the phases could run in parallel then we can have a parallel phased approach so imagine if we have multiple resource pools and one resource pool can work on the residential building another resource pool uh, start with the in, in parallel they start with the uh, shopping uh, shopping mall and the others other resource pool can start in the uh, on the uh, parking lot or the park so so the phased project can be delivered in various phases sequentially phase one phase two phase three or it can be delivered uh, phase to phase relation can be parallel so this gives us phase to phase relationship phase to phase relationship which can be either sequential uh, relationship which can be either sequential or parallel or yeah so this is one thing we can we can keep in mind and then we talked about iterative iterative uh, approach towards development life cycle where we said that it's similar to phase approach but the phase our iteration is smaller here the phase length if you ask me the phase length was six to eight months although we split a bigger project into smaller uh, smaller phases but the phase length was six to 12 months that's still a huge project in itself but when we talked about iterative approach we are saying two to four weeks two to four weeks of small project or iteration that we will be doing and this is where scope is variable scope is variable uh, scope is variable then scope is not known fully not known fully uh, here what we can say it's unknown okay scope is not clear on the day one scope is not known not clear on day one okay we partially know about it and then we will choose this approach which i mentioned last time which is the uh, however we can say here we can say uh, one constraint that could be that we can't estimate is since we don't know the scope we don't know the um, actual time needed or actual cost needed but here we can say that our constraints will limit us like we cannot keep on dreaming so we can say we need to fix fix our uh, cost and fix our uh, time that this is maximum we have so that we should come up with the more valuable features that could be delivered within this cost and this time so we need to fix our cost and time in the iterative life cycle otherwise we uh, definitely uh, we do not have indefinite and what we call it um, indefinite resources we always have definite resources and that's where the project management comes in like we need to deliver most out of the definite resources so we say we have fixed time fixed cost but we don't know the scope let's try to uncover the scope and deliver something which is more valuable for the client okay and then we have incremental approach incremental approach is a little bit uh, of incremental approach towards life cycle which is feature driven approach where we say uh, it's also the same situation that scope is variable and similar to the above but we are saying uh, what we deliver in the phase in in iteration one is perfectly usable so we can say here unlike by the way unlike uh, this one is single delivery single still it's it's single delivery phase approach is also single delivery phase approach is also single delivery and predictive is also single delivery. okay because in the we deliver to the client once only but incremental approach is something which is interesting where those scope is variable but deliveries are multiple also multiple deliveries because the feature that i'm going to deliver is usable customer can start using it so although the scope is variable but i will deliver a feature in the first iteration it will be uh, usable i can work on enhancing this feature in the second iteration um, but still client can keep, keep on using it so example of it is that you delivered a feature a in first iteration you it was accepted then you delivered on top of it feature b and now the product has two features so you are implementing feature after feature the product so the product whatever whatever you are delivering it's added to the existing product so the product is enhanced and you are incrementing on top of the features after feature uh, and there are multiple deliveries happening so this is one release feature a release one delivery happened then this is you can say this is release one it's sprint one or whatever uh, but we decided to release as well this is release two this is released so multiple deliveries this is what i'm saying so we learned till now predictive approach of 
project development life cycle where we have one delivery single delivery we learned about multiple phase approach for uh, phased approach of project development where we have still single delivery for the full scope but we uh, split the scope of work into uh, more manageable uh, smaller phases uh, but the phase lengths are 6 to 12 months let's say then we have an iterative approach of development life cycle which is a uh, shorter duration for the uh, iteration which is two to four weeks and here uh, as well the delivery in the end is a single delivery so all these three approaches are single delivery approach. but from incremental we have a multiple delivery approach and this is where we say if incremental is multiple delivery approach so as agile is multiple delivery approach so agile itself is iterative plus incremental this is what we need to remember always that agile is incremental plus iterative at the same time we may be also enhancing uh, feature a in the uh, in the iteration two we may be enhancing feature a and we may be developing feature b and then we may be enhancing feature a and b as well and we are we are developing feature c which means we are also adding features new features as well as enhancing the existing features with the new iterations that we are moving uh, forward with so agile is iterative as well as incremental here you can consider that you deliver a Let's can you kindly make the font bigger? Yeah. Is it readable now? Yeah, just kindly draw the lines or, or so it doesn't mix up. Yeah, it's mixed up. Let me, let me just I mean just draw a borderline in Excel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Predictive, multi-phase, interactive, incremental. Better, Gigi? Thank you, yes. Now, would you like to summarize, Gigi? I like, I like when you summarize things. <laughs> I'm still uh, trying to digest. Right, well, the predictive approach is uh, Somehow you know what is expected as an end result of the project. So the stakeholders have already defined what what they want, or you could say the scope has been uh, clearly specified. So the team um, wouldn't need to go through several um, iterations of the project cycle. Yeah. So they can they can estimate the. They can estimate the time that is required. They could also there could also be a estimate on, on I think the resources or the people required, and therefore the, the cost of the project because it's just a, a one off, uh, one off yeah. cycle. Yeah. Whereas in the multi multiple project, um, oh, uh, there is a, the, sorry the end result, is fixed, but it is somewhat like in a phase manner like. Um, when you complete a milestone or a phase, then you start again. Yes. Because it's um, it's an ongoing process of like, you could say small projects in one, combined in one. Am I right? Yeah. So like, um, let's say for example, you're you're building a house. Yeah. So you have a. Is the house a good example of that? So you you design. Okay, you go through the process of of uh, designing the first floor, the living room. And so you complete that part. I don't know. Am I right? And then you go okay. to the next. Uh, let's say the the bedrooms, the dining room. Okay, I think not the construction. I, I I would look at it as interior design. Yeah. Okay, so let's say it's already. I mean, the, the house is built. The project yeah. is about interior design. Yeah. So yeah. every every part of the house has to go through that cycle of like trying to see what's in inside the, that yeah. room. How is it built? The bathrooms. What's required and and then see if it is um, meeting the requirements of requirement of the client. But like one part is over, then you move on to the next. Am I right? Correct. Then iterative. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so in uh, in iterative, 
there could be changes yeah. in the in the scope of the project. So therefore, you cannot really. Um, yes, customer is dreaming. Okay. So he is dreaming. Yeah, I need so this feature can, and that feature. So you just so many, start with something. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. The, yeah. It's not clear, but he says I have this much of money to spend. Yeah. Is that right? Correct. Correct. He has some and definite so, money. Yeah. Yeah, and and the time catered. So somehow you've got to complete that in in just one cycle. You can't redesign it and then again test it and go through that process again. Correct. Once you deliver it, that's it. You you just yeah, is it correct. right? Correct, correct. Um so exactly. So if you started sketching, let's say uh mm -hmm. as per the customer um advice, let's say if you started sketching a painting, okay, and then you show it to the customer after two to four weeks, if he accepts it, the project will end there. But if he yeah. said, I need you to iterate it, you will take it back and then he will give you the feedback and then you will improvise mm -hmm. on it and then show it to him or her. And if they accept it, project will finish. It's mm -hmm. one delivery, but you are always showing to the customer the painting every time you see him. You see, yeah, this, is, this, is, this is a nice example of, you know, if you are painting uh, okay. on customer demand, okay, a portrait, okay. customer, uh, each time you finish the iteration. Right. You know? so that's why it's okay, single. So for incremental, um, for example, you're doing landscaping. Yes. And there is a the, the land, I mean the property has four sites. Sorry, the land has four sites and you've got to do the landscaping for for the whole place. So the so let's say the front yard. There is the front part, the back part, side to the right, side to the left. True. Now um if uh, if the client is satisfied with the front side. He would extend or he 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 would um probably extend it to the left side or, or to the right side am i right so um, the, the first part what was uh, the first once the front is done yeah. then again he, he, he may extend it to the next to the next um, area which is the right side but you have to deliver first the front like you've got i agree i agree to complete the front and that's like i just want to take you to you know draw to the right hmm. I want you to draw some, you know, a distinction between the gray color and the blue color. Okay, based yeah. on uh, based on our uh, two things. It's a straightforward project, or it's a complex project like going to the moon, or a complex software development project where uh, end product can have hundred of features, but we do not know now that uh, which hundred. Maybe we know two or three or five of them. So imagine this: these light color light color approaches will be applicable to any landscaping, any uh any any project which we can perceive the end goal like and we know the journey out of it could be and what complexities could come but those projects where we do not know uh how much effort and how how many complexities are there if we need to let's say go to the mars or build a house on a mars uh we we, we do not know now so we have to start it somewhere and then it's just a dream similar to to the dream of a person who needs a innovative product a software that can serve uh mortgage clients okay but he he do not know um, now what features he want it to be there. It could be just to for the client to to be able to get a mortgage loan, right? But end of the day, uh, it's just a idea. But now he has to sit with you and tell you, okay, it should have a client registration uh, module, and then uh, uh, then we will uh, we will discuss another time that what analysis need to be done on the client who is asking for the loan, and then many reports and many other things can be there in, in this software as well. But we don't know today. We may brainstorm and we may list down these features. Gradually and deliver these features gradually. Okay. Okay. Did you say something that we missed? Yeah. No, because oh, you, oh, you're just posting. Okay, because I thought the thing is hanging. No, I was just uh, trying to make this uh, this this okay, into, okay, you know, okay. So the idea is clear, guys. Let's uh, jump to the other topic now. Okay. okay. Let's jump to the other topic. So we we'll go back to our slide, and where this whole discussion started was this slide, and we have thoroughly covered. So this uh, uh, PM, the what's that PMP book or the what's the full form of this uh, project management body of knowledge? Uh, yeah. PMO so this is a book. Do we need to buy this separately? No, uh, 
once you become a member, you get your own copy of uh, PM Book Guide. Uh, by a member, I mean when you will become a member of PMI, Project Management Institute, uh, you yeah. will get your own copy of PM Book Guide. Uh, this will be uh, one way. Another is that I can share with you my own copy uh, for your reference. Um, yeah, just, in the meantime, yeah. until, until we become members, can you send us so that it's easier to yeah. refer to it? Yeah, I always recommend that uh, you register and uh, with the PMI and then you get your own copy. Uh, but in case, uh, because again, uh, when it comes to ethics, PMI does not allow us to share our copy, right? Okay. They said that uh, everyone saying. should buy their own copy. So. Yeah. So, I anyways, I was, uh, I, just I, was you. Download, I was able to download uh, a previous version. What's the last version of this? Seventh, seventh, seventh edition. I think uh, I have six. Is it a big difference? Yeah, yeah. Seventh edition is uh, totally a different approach uh, than the sixth edition. Till, till the sixth edition, PMI was uh, promoting the process. So how much is the registration again? Well, for the PMI, uh, you will register a, by paying $139 to PMI. And yeah. uh, remember, I told you that uh, the exam cost. Uh, yeah is uh, $555 if you yeah. are not a member. But if you become a member, the exam cost uh, reduces to $405, which means that if you add uh, on top of it $139, even then you will end up paying uh, roughly $545. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth to be yeah. a... Yeah, yeah we, we will eventually, uh, we will be a members yeah. because you have to be a member to take the exam in the first place, right? Uh, no, you, but, you can, you can uh, no, no, give you can. the exam even if you are not a member. However... Uh, oh, another question I have, Sha, there, there are... Um, Associations in Dubai, because I have the uh, I have been invited to to speak there. I spoke about my mapping, wow. the, the project uh, the project management association there. Yes, it was it was held. Um, yes, at the so, men's college at that yes. time. Yes, yes, it, I don't it, know it, if it's still there. Still there. It's still there. They are called chapters, just like those. Yeah, they are, it's a chapter. So uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. I, I spoke in one of their meetings. Yeah, in, in, in case you uh, become a member, you have an option to also become a char uh, chapter member. That is yeah. additional. So are there are there um, chapters here in California? In oh God! Sacramento but you are or... you are at the at the hometown of PMI. I mean, not at hometown exactly, but California chapter is certainly there. You once you will become a member of PMI. Also, yeah, exactly. You will also have a chance to become member of the California chapter for paying additional maybe ten or fifteen dollars. Yeah. yeah, and then I'm... you can. Spend yeah, we will check that out. I don't know if uh, George would like yeah. to join uh, uh, which place if in Sacramento because he comes from Sacramento. If yeah, he yeah, wants yeah. Explore, Sacramento it's worth exploring. Yeah, it's worth San Jose. And for me, um, because I'm working in San Jose and I live in, I mean, I was yeah. in San Leandro. But yeah, yeah. anyway, sorry for, for the interruption. All right. Just, um, so so just, just one big recap. Uh, when again, recap plan based approach we discussed and we discussed the change based approach. In change based approach, we could we can utilize, uh, think about agile and implementing and iterative development uh, methods and in which we talk about time boxing our. Um, sprint or iteration, which is two to four weeks, uh, and then we can call them uh, cadence, iteration, sprint, and this is this is where we we normally do not use the traditional project management names like a project manager or business analyst. Here we use product owner, project team, um, scrum master, facilitator, agile coach, these kind of roles. And here we uh, deliver, deliver the value iteratively or incrementally during the whole life cycle, and we regularly ask for the feedback from customer. This enables us to continuously improve the final product. So. And then these are the two approaches which are widely used, like we either go agile or we go predictive. Then there is a hybrid approach. So hybrid is any combination of above. So it can be uh, predictive plus incremental, or it can be predictive plus iterative or predictive plus agile. Uh, so consider a uh, project where you have to also develop a hardware and develop a software. So developing a software could be kind of an agile or iterative uh, development approach, but the uh, the scope of work which require you to acquire some hardware, infrastructure, some things which are tangible, uh, understandable, some servers, some PCs. So it, it is pretty much predictive approach. So you can utilize a uh, hybrid uh, methodology of managing a project where there are software components also involved and hardware components also involved. So this, this sign, whenever you see, uh, is for the, hi sorry, uh, this sign is always for the hybrid. So I can call it hybrid. This is my approach. Let's move on now. By the way, did George uh, join back? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, All right. Good to have you here again. Uh, so in the organizations where we work, there, there are a few organizations, like the big organizations, which can afford um, to have a structure like project management office. So not every organization can afford it. It's a uh, it's a costly structure, it's a management overhead, but it's worth to have a project management office within the organization. So when it comes to a PMO or project management office, uh, they can provide 
you three type of roles like they can they can deliver your value in three ways uh, having pmos or having a project management office in your organization it can provide supportive role to all the project managers in the organization like they can provide trainings on various methodologies for managing the projects like the way we are now uh, understanding uh, i am providing a supportive role to you guys uh, i am explaining the pmi methodology of managing the projects uh, so this is where we we introduce you to the best practices standards and we coach you train you guide you uh, with the and we provide you with templates like say ready made template for developing a charter uh, to start with your project uh, how can i put up my uh, procurement statement of work or how can i put up my uh, uh, stakeholder register uh, here here you go these are the templates start with so this is kind of a supportive role um, then we may have uh, PMO departments which provides a controlling role. Once I already provided you the training with, then I have uh, to audit you. That are, are you actually using those processes to manage your projects or those templates to manage your projects? So I will come to a random project manager in the organization as a person, and I may ask them that I want to see your charters for this project, and I want to see your stakeholder register, and I want to see where is your issue log, where is your decision log, where is your uh, risk register, uh, what are your mitigation strategies? So I am asking the questions which are. Um, which are the stand, which are about the standards and the processes that should be used while managing a project. So that's a controlling role. Like I, there is someone who is policing, like a police is asking uh, that whether methodologies and standards are being followed in the organization or not. And then if they go one step beyond, like a PMO department goes one step beyond, and then they work side by side with the project managers, providing them with the necessary support wherever each project manager working on his projects needs support from the other project managers. So PMO is side by side working with the project managers, resolving interdependencies between various projects, as well as providing them some insights what's happening with the organizational strategy, like um, like uh, where where is the link of this project with the organizational strategy and uh, when this when uh, organization decides that we need to stop funding for one project and we need to increase the funding for another project. So the PMO is the person who bridges this gap between top management and the project manager. So PMO will work shoulder to shoulder, providing a means for the project manager to escalate anything to get top management support and vice versa. If some direction is changing from the management side and we have priorities which are changing, then PMO will manage the resource movement from one project to the other project. Like he will be one step uh, above project manager and he will have the control over the resources with this project manager. And he can say that since priorities have changed, so we have to move the resources from this project to the other project and we have to put hold of this project. So that's kind of a directive role. So that's that's pretty much in the traditional predictive organization, which we just saw supportive role, controlling role, and directive role. But if you draw a line between these two approaches, sorry, uh, here. So this is pretty much predictive environment where we have these kind of roles. Uh, we call it PMO office. But if you go agile, in agile, we call PMO office. We have a different name, which is a value delivery office. So it's called as video or agile center of excellence. We call it agile center of excellence or video value delivery office. The role pretty much is about training, coaching, uh, and providing agile, the principles of agile, emphasizing agile mindset, uh, what are the agile values, uh, and what are the software practices or uh, agile practices like Scrum, like uh, different various frameworks like Extreme Programming, and various other frameworks, which may be uh, uh, Scrum Masters, uh, because in agile, we have Scrum Masters, right? So we uh, who will coach the Scrum Masters that would be agile coach. So agile coach will be like a PMO, but here, it's since the organization, which is pretty agile, so we will have the name for him, like he is an agile coach, and he will coach the Scrum Masters like the way the PMO coaches the project managers in the traditional organization. So here, if you have a PMO, here you will have agile coach. All right. And many large and established organizations can afford PMO, as I just mentioned. Uh, not every organization can have this management overhead. Any question before we move to the other slide? That's all right. It's fine. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you look at the organization as a system of value delivery, we need to. Uh, we as uh, let's say the management of the organization or maybe higher management like uh, chiefs or portfolio managers they put up a organizational project management um, model to deliver the value for the organization so how it how it works all the projects are the vehicles that can deliver the value for the organization so in organization where we work there could be projects happening operations happening 
programs happening, portfolios happening, but we need a system. Uh, we need to see as a whole what is happening in the organization and are we investing time and money that uh, we can see any project in the organization can be either a standalone project or it can be part of a program. Um, and then each program could be a standalone program or it could be part of a portfolio. And in organization, we can have various portfolios and we can have uh, various programs and we can have various projects. And there could be a link like a grandfather link, like portfolio is a grandfather and then program is a father and then project is a son, a grandson. So this could be understood like this. You have a standalone project within the organization, okay, here. Yeah. And then you have a project which is part of a program. So it, it belongs to this program. Okay, then you may have a project which is part of a program and then that program is part of a portfolio. Okay, and then you may have a, they have various projects which are directly part of a certain portfolio. It does not go under any program. And then you may have programs which has various projects and both are part of a portfolio as well. And one more thing which is happening in the organization is that always we have to achieve our tactical goals. So for tactical goals, we always have to run operations. So all the operations also enable um, various projects as well as various programs, as well as various portfolios. In the end, operations um, also achieve tactical goals of the business, whereas projects achieve strategic goals of the business. So the environment you see here is the internal environment of the organization. And then there is some external environment of the organization. And then we are going to understand there are various factors which limit our project success, uh, which are internal to the organization. The uh, projects progress internally. It could be a marketplace condition. It could be regulatory requirements. It could be any uh, external factors, uh, suppliers, contractors, regulators, etc. So all in all, organizations establish the strategy execution framework that coordinates the projects, programs, portfolios, and operations within the organization <laughs> to deliver the strategy of the organization. Any question on this excellent slide? I think this that's all right. All Thank right. you. Okay, let's move. While is anything with the answer? Okay, so uh, from the previous slide, we got to know there are programs happening in the organization and portfolios happening. So what is, uh, so far we have understood what is project. So 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 we have uh, also touched project management. So we need to understand uh, when it comes to project and delivering the project, we say that, okay, project management is the application of knowledge, tools and techniques and the skills uh, to deliver the project objectives within the time, uh, cost and uh, quality objectives, right? So that's that's in the head of project manager that I need to deliver the project objectives within the constraints of the project, which can be um, to deliver within on time, on budget, and uh, full scope uh, with the best quality. Now that's the project management uh, mindset. Now then, when it comes to program management, it's not about delivery of the uh, project deliverables. It's it's more about managing the interdependencies between various uh, projects, managing the resource shared resources between various projects, and delivering the program benefits. Now each project may deliver its. Uh, uh, end goal, which is a deliverable, but still we won't uh, we won't be able to achieve our benefits. So so it can happen that each project manager can say that I delivered my deliverable, but in the end we couldn't deliver what was the benefit for the organization. So we need to have a person or 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 or, 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 or someone who ensures that projects are delivered in a coordinated way, so that the benefits that we need to achieve from the delivery we should be also achieving with the delivery. Because it may happen. Let's take an example of. Uh, a program which is uh, which is for let's say um, one of the uh, province or one of the uh, city where we have education level of between of the kids which is let's say uh, only 20% uh, of the children are literate they are going to school so let's say our program says that we need to uh, we have three years and we need to raise the literacy rate among children of this city from 20% to 50% so each year we need to ensure that we have increased the literacy rate 10% so to do so, we may uh, have various projects. We may need to do various projects. So project A could be that we need to construct various schools and project uh, B could be that we need to um, we need to hire various uh, uh, instructors and project C could be that we need to devise a curriculum uh, for those schools. Now, if each of the project manager is busy doing their own projects, sorry, there is a question, please. There's some side talk. Uh, uh, are you asking any question, Gigi? I oh, continue? I was just uh, I, because George sent me a link of a job in Tracy, which is for community development. 
and whatever exactly what you're saying is one of the uh, related to it huh? to be involved in the improvement of the literacy uh, yeah oh, the wow. um, <laughs> educational system of the communities in tracy so uh, that's what I, I was reminded <laughs> yeah because he sent me that that job the link for a it's a very good position community development director wow. which is really my my goal i mean it's something that i really wanted to aspire and that's for, for this reason i i wanted to, to do this project management with you as well you're on the right uh, right track thank you <laughs> all right so so you see if i as a project manager coming back to the example i delivered my i constructed my school and then i look around i don't find the instructors and i look around i don't find the curriculum i cannot start uh, the school with the kids uh, onboarding the kids right so someone should be there that he ensures that a school is ready by that time uh, there should be some instructors which are ready and curriculum is ready then we can uh, kick, kick off one school and then we say okay we achieved something in the end people uh, people like the children started to go to the school so so that's the program manager role that he ensures or she ensures that um, the projects are managed in the coordinated fashion so that the benefits that we need to achieve through these projects could also be achieved that's a program manager role and then looking towards the portfolio management it's like what we need to do like it's not about how we need to do like how we need to do is uh, you can say program management I mean, okay but what we need to do is uh, is the portfolio management like looking towards other organizations benchmarking them i am a let's say a ceo of a telecom company i let's say um, uh, in, in dubai we were having two and then i look look around and i see okay let's say what etisalat is doing in the region and let's say let me go beyond and i say okay what uh, Betelco is doing in Bahrain, or what? Let's say um, any other operator is doing in the in the in the, in the MENA region. Okay, maybe SPC or Mobile in Saudi Arabia or uh, whatever. So 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 looking at the broader um, organization, broader um, environment, I benchmark to the other industry operators which sit equal to me, and then I say, okay, let me expand uh, my footprint. Let me let me uh, let me introduce new products new offerings so what need to be done is a portfolio manager job and then accordingly the projects and programs will follow so i am i am steering the ship as a as a, a leader of the organization and uh, and if i um, steer it towards north all the projects and the programs uh, should follow me towards north and if i am steering the ship towards south or west wherever so all the organizational projects and programs need to be following the new direction so i am the portfolio manager I will give the direction to the organization and then accordingly the projects and programs will follow new programs will be sponsored and the old programs and the projects which were going to the other direction will be uh, will be uh, stopped all in all you got the idea from project to program and program to portfolio any yes, questions that's on this all right. that, that's all right thank you okay now <clears throat> the organizations in which we work we may uh, be working in a kind of a functional organization or we may find ourselves working in a, in a projectized organization or we may find ourselves working in a matrix which is a hybrid organization so what does these mean so functional organization is pretty basic it means that we have a marketing department engineering department and sales department and uh, all of these department heads are reporting to a ceo so all the department heads hold uh, the budget and all the departments heads uh, all the resources are reporting to these department heads so there is no one called as project manager uh, we only have functional managers and uh, everybody reports like people in finance report to finance people in engineering report to engineering uh, director or vp people in uh, marketing reports to marketing director and vp and then all these people report to the ceo like all the heads report to the ceo so that's pretty functional now in the functional organizations we see that project manager um, he there is no title called project manager we may we may have projects in a functional organization but but it is only the functional manager who uh, who, who who the resources report to, who has the resources and who has the budget to manage the project. So who manages the project itself is the functional manager. So there is no title holder in staff who can be designated as the project manager. So functional organization is pretty functional. It doesn't have any support for the project manager or, or no one can shine in this organization and become a project manager because there is no career path. There is nothing called as project manager in the organizational chart. Now, when it comes to opposite of it is the projectized organization. So the projectized organization looks like totally different. If I need to draw, uh, so how, how it will look like is uh, projectized organization will be CEO will be here. I think we should go back to our uh, Excel. It will be much better. Let me go directly to the Excel. Okay, so let's go down, down, down. Okay, I think this is this. Okay, and uh, this is, I was saying about functional organization and in functional organization, organization I can call uh, CEO is at the top and then I may have a marketing department, VP marketing, marketing vp finance vp engineering and vp vice president i mean uh could be sales uh and then i may have staff or under it maybe there could be directors and managers but all are staffs then all are staffs so 
these people will be skilled in sales only let's say uh, these people will be skilled in engineering these people will be skilled in finance knowledge and these people will be skilled in marketing knowledge okay and there could be many other departments so on so that's pretty functional structure so if i see um, the authority of the project manager is zero functional uh, resources report to functional manager and no title as project manager so the projects do happen but projects happen uh, in this fashion like projects may happen within the marketing department itself okay and projects may happen within the finance department itself and we may have standalone projects happening in engineering and all these projects individually are managed by uh, their own functional managers which may resources report to and budget is with the vp or director of the function so there is no authority of the project manager all right so contrary to this if i go to the projectized organization here the things will be pretty much different projectized organization if i happen to work in a projectized organization then the structure will look a little bit different here the project managers will be there so pm 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 and all the resources will report to they will have their own resources like i will be the pm then i will have my own uh, my own estimator planner i will have my own designer i may have my own uh, accountant maybe uh, engineer technician whatever etc so each pm uh, will have his own resource pool which will directly report to the pm he has the authority pm has the authority to hire has the authority to hire fire complete in charge he is in charge of the resources as well as budget okay and he is directly reporting to ceo all these pms are directly reporting to ceo of the organization so they have their own staffs and they so uh, contrary to functional organization this type of organization has uh, project manager has the authority full authority and he has authority on the resources he has authority he or she has authority on the budget and they have their own dedicated resources so i do not need a estimator from the uh, pm2 so this is project manager one does not need an estimator from project manager two neither they need from three they have their own dedicated resources because these resource pools actually are costing to their project so they might not give these resources to other projects uh, because they have their own cost and their own scope that need to be delivered so everyone will have his own resources reporting to him and they have a scope to deliver but now what happens with the project manager in this type of organization which is projectized there is no home for the team and the uh, project manager after the project finishes no home for pm as and resources because project is finished team will be demolished team will go home after project finishes successfully or unsuccessfully project is finished team will go home so there is no uh, job security it's a project based company so project is there your job is there project is not there your job is there. okay however the functional organizations we may have a project um, we may have uh, uh, a resource which works on part of his day on a project and then maybe four hours a day a resource is working for a project and then the rest of the four hours they are working with the pretty much operational jobs that they have once the project finishes they will come back to the eight hours on their own operational uh, work that they are doing uh, during the project on part-time basis so the this is there is a home uh, for everyone there is a home right after the project finishes you can go back to your operational job after the project finishes okay so you have a home you will go back and do continue to do like a finance person you will continue to do your finance stuff you will continue to do your maybe part of uh, you may be involved for a month or two or three or a year for, for a certain duration during every day for a project however once project finishes you will fully dedicatedly working on the um, your project your your operational duty and your boss is the functional boss like you always report with the straight line to the functional boss straight straight line reporting to the functional head you are reporting to the functional head now in between we have a structure called i want to add various maybe here here insert not like that hold on we have third structure which is called as matrix matrix or hybrid why oh, it's increasing okay no problem i will make it white no roads so that's called hybrid or matrix basically it's matrix structure which could be a combination of projectized and functional but let's draw how it works 
So it can be a CEO at the top, and then we may have an office called director, PMO, and then the PM1, PM2, PM3. Okay, director it could be VP, but just taking as an example, director finance, and similarly director engineering, and then we could be director marketing. Okay, so all our staffs, let's say all our staffs. Okay, now what can happen? This PM may be utilizing a resource from this department, uh, and this department, and this department. Okay, and this this uh, this is a project one. So project one uh, is utilizing staff from the uh, one 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 person from finance, one person from engineering, one person from marketing. Part of their day. Okay, so part of their day is to report to with a dotted line reporting to the PM, dotted line reporting to the project manager, to the project manager, and then straight line reporting to their uh, still straight line reporting to their uh, functional head. Let me go. So it has two boss. This guy has two boss. Now this is a problem. It will always be there will always be a problem in this type of organization where conflict of interest will come. Conflict of interest will come. If you ask the staff, what are you doing? He may or she may say that she is working for the project and she didn't get a ch chance to work on the operational duties. And then if you ask them, where's the progress on the project? They may say, uh, we were working on the operational duties and then we didn't get a chance to work on the project assignment. So when you have two type of, uh, uh, you need to fulfill your uh, direct boss uh, interest and then you need to fulfill your um, project uh, assignments, it will always be conflict of interest. So it will always be challenging at, as a resource. It will always be challenging when you have many bosses, right? <laughs> What is Gigi? Yeah, so yeah, as you said, the functional organization has a specific uh, team to fulfill a certain um, function in the company, the HR, the sales, marketing, the finance. And Can so you come a little bit closer to the mic? I just, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's better. Perfect. Yeah, so in the functional organization, you have the CEO, and the CEO will have the uh, managers under who are performing who are responsible to certain functions in the company such as finance sales and so on engineering and so on and so they, they will have their own team doing that function and then you have the project projectized organization where the the ceo under uh, under the ceo you've got project managers reporting to him and each of these project managers they will have their own team performing a role that is specifically for that project so the, what happens is they are they're recruited or they, they're put together to complete a project from starting to end. Once the project is over, then this team is dissolved. It's no longer in existence. Whereas in the functional, they still continue as they are. And then you have the one in between, which is the hybrid, where the CEO is there and they've got still the directors of the functions, but um, they will have a project management role and they will pull resources from the uh, functional teams. So for the time being, let's say for a period of three months or six months, this team are doing two, two roles. They are involved in their day-to-day -day operational job and then they're also fulfilling the roles to complete a project. The, uh, I think the advantage of having this uh, functional, sorry, this hybrid um, structure is that you get a very um, direct or you could say um, a live situation in the project because the people who are involved in, in the project are also the same people who are in the functional level. So they understand the challenges that they're facing. And therefore, they would appreciate what this project is going to help, what, what this, the completion of the project, uh, how, I'm sorry, how the completion of the project can improve their system, their productivity. So they will be even more committed to complete the project. However, the disadvantage is that because they are doing two, two things, like, I mean, they're doing the operational job and then they're doing the project um, jobs or tasks, they cannot fully focus on one at a time. So there could be a situation wherein uh, they're expected to do something on the operational level or on the operational side, and they have an excuse to say, oh, I can do this because I'm doing this task for the project. And vice versa, when the project manager would ask them, okay, so what's the progress of this um, thing that, sorry, this task that was given to you? Um, instead of completing it 100%, you say, oh, you know, I've only done 40% of the task because 
I had to allocate time for the operational side. I was busy solving certain issues there, so I had to put this on hold. Perfect. So uh, that's the way I see yeah, uh, yeah. what you have to explain. Yeah, beautiful explain. Uh, one more thing. Uh, there are uh, chances of uh, um, multi-skilling or cross uh, uh, developing someone in the organization as cross-functional staff in this kind of organization because when you see staff three from marketing working with staff two from engineering and staff yeah. one from finance uh, yeah. working with the pm1 so there is a chance that marketing guy will understand few stuff from engineering and engineering exactly. guy will understand finance so you have a chance that you will develop your cross-functional skills yeah yeah because you're bringing in, in on the same table people of different skills working yeah. together yeah and so they learn they learn from each other and also, there is something uh, intangible that can develop from this uh, hybrid uh, structure is that you are um, building the team dynamics because they are working together for this project and uh, they contribute their efforts and they're, they're all supporting each other. They know that the success of this project will depend on each one's uh, contribution. Once this project is over, you will expect that the, the people involved in the project will somehow uh, be more cooperative they will be more uh, supportive of each other therefore they will be uh, functioning better in terms of team teamwork as yeah. compared to before when they really didn't even know each other yes because yes. in the in the functional structure everybody has their own uh, 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 wall they, they do that thing and they do what they work and they're not really mindful of whatever other people are doing so they, they'll be good in their job but there's not much of interaction with other uh, functions Yes. But in, in the hybrid, that's where you get the chance that these uh, individual functions now come together and work as a team for the completion of, of a project, right? True, 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 true. I think beautifully, you beautifully summarized it. We can have a uh, recap uh, with this slide. I think we talked about uh, three types, functional matrix and project oriented. One is composite, and then let's go back to our slide. So composite is an organization where two types of structures. Oh, composite. Made... We did talk about... Yeah, composite is, composite is where we may have both type of structures at the same time like project one is being uh, you know delivered as a functional organization and project two is being delivered as a uh, hybrid let's say so in a in a oh yeah in the same organization in the same organization we may have um, uh, one project being delivered as functional purely functional and the other project is delivered as um, as uh, uh, as matrix or project ties could be any combination of these so we may have certain organizations uh, where they they have exceptions like they do certain projects they assign a pm and then they give some shared authority between the functional manager as well as the uh, pm and they create this matrix structure for certain project however they are pretty much functional so that okay. we call as composite yeah All right. okay so if we summarize this table has uh, the beautiful summary of these three type of organization structures uh, functional where the team loyalty is toward the functional uh, head Team members are reporting to the functional manager and PM yeah. goal is not there. And then uh, everyone working on the project is on working on part-time basis on project, but their full-time job is the functional job and uh, control is pretty much with the functional manager, the budget and the resources. If we talk about project ties, it's an opposite. Here, the loyalty is toward the project kind of work. Uh, they report to the PM. They are working full-time on the project-related assignments and the scope. And then um, if even the project manager and the staff are working uh, full-time, even PM is working full-time, and then the control is uh, with the PM, full control is with the PM. Now in matrix, it's shared responsibility between functional manager and the project manager. So matrix is, since we see, we have seen that there are two bosses, so they share the authority on the staff as well as budget. Um, it's uh, more about uh, working on the project part-time still. Uh, project manager role um, is also part-time and both functional manager and project manager uh, resources are reporting to both of these people and the loyalty is always a conflict. All right, so then let's talk about your experience um in your experience in your current or recent or past project can you identify which type of organizational structure you worked in and how it affected your project in uh, following ways uh, when it comes to resource availability or uh, implementation of the project or how people collaborated with each other so do you have any uh, example to share dg or george yeah um when i was um, actually uh, all this software systems related um projects that I was involved with, they were all hybrid. Yeah. So when I, I was working for, um, I worked for Alpha Team in the sub HR, um, HR uh, module. Mm -hmm. So they, they put together a team of HR professionals coming from different um, 
divisions of Alpha Team, from motors, from uh, engineering, from all the different other, um, from retail. They they got them all together to be in this project of sub HR uh, implementation. So whatever you were saying were very visible to me. I mean, they're the, the very um, clear because I have experienced it. Um, for the functional, I also had a, I also had an experience of uh, having the functional uh, team okay. yeah. where yeah. Um, when I was working for MMI, uh, we had we were we replaced uh, a, a system called Par. I mean, we implemented a system called Paradigm. Mm -hmm. So that's only one department. Mm -hmm. The HR is involved. Mm -hmm. So and it's just, it's not a very big company, you know, mm -hmm. maritime and mercantile, no, as mm -hmm. compared to output team where they have so many divisions. Mm -hmm. So what this uh, the team is only comprising of the HR people mm -hmm. or in the department of the HR. Yeah. So there are no people from other businesses, mm -hmm. just HR. So the, the person involved in payroll, the person involved in gratuity, the person involved in recruitment, they're all there. Mm -hmm. So they're able to to put together the implementation of this project. And the head of that is the HR um, manager. So uh, even if the project is complete, of course, the team are still there. They're still working there in that department. Whereas for the uh, SAP uh, HR team, uh, as soon as the the project was implemented, the team it was it was uh, dissolved and they went back to each department mm -hmm. to do their own work. Got you. Got you. So, so, uh, so I could see yeah. that um, that there is a better interaction of people, mm -hmm. of, of the, the, uh, the team, from different departments they got to know each other otherwise people in automotive people in engineering people in retail they really didn't know each other yeah but after the project was completed they got to know each other excellent so it means that uh, it was an opportunity to come closer to the people through working on a project yeah yeah very very good. and the, the project manager uh at the time he was a south african and he was a consultant mm -hmm. so once the project is over his role is over mm -hmm. excellent excellent so yeah. let's move on um all right i may i may ask uh george if you want to share some insights maybe on the same sorry uh yes no i can't hear you very far away all right if, uh, if uh, it's silence, I would consider no, nothing to say. Uh, maybe you will speak later. All right, let's move on. Uh, so now we will be uh, taking maybe five minutes break if you want, uh, because I'm starting another uh, domain, uh, the principles uh, from the BM Book Guide seventh edition. Uh, Gigi, is it uh, fine? We take five minutes break, or we continue and finish. We have 25 minutes left. Continue and finish. Can we have five minutes break that I want to go? Yeah, yeah. Let's have five minutes break. You didn't hear me. Okay. I was in mute. Yeah. Five, five. All right. <clears throat> so as I mentioned a while ago, uh, PM Book Guide, uh, sixth edition, or I would say from third edition onward till sixth edition, it was primarily about process-based project management. And uh, when we say process-based project management, it says like there are a group of processes uh, in total, there were 49 processes, and these were distributed between various uh, project management process groups, like initiation has various processes, planning has various processes, execution has other processes, monitoring, controlling, and closing has other processes. So, and this is how the curriculum of the PMP uh, uh, PMP exam was also um, re resolving around those processes. However, when we came to PM Book 7th edition, so it brought a principal uh, and performance domain-based approach. Um, so. Uh, this is this is a significant shift uh, how, because this is where we are going towards responsive being more responsible and uh, touching uh, the human aspects uh, of project management rather than following rigid processes so so so, so let's begin the 12 principles that are brought to us uh, from the pm book guide seventh edition uh, the first principle that pmi uh, expects expects that project manager develops his character around this principle is that he has to he has to be a diligent respectful and caring steward uh, so just like a steward on a ship uh, is kind, respectable, looking after you, uh, the PM role is that he has to look after everyone uh, in his team uh, who is looking towards him for support. He should provide him the necessary support. Um, he has to demonstrate 
the caring attitude, uh, not only towards team, but also towards the environment. Uh, he has to be caring enough uh, about sustainability. He has to be caring enough about uh, not to harm um, uh, non-living or living, uh, primarily living things, right? Um, not to harm animals, not to harm plants, not to harm soil, not to create pollution. Uh, so he has more responsibility towards um, sustainability, towards compliance, towards uh, uh, the people that he works for. Okay, so like a servant leader, he has to uh, support the team as well. Now, that's first principle uh, we have to embody. Then secondly, we have to recognize that we work in a, 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 we work in a kind of an interconnected organization, which is like a system. Okay, everything is connected to other. We can't do projects in silo. We are doing projects that are happening in organization and the organization has an ecosystem. It has, it has, it's a complete system and there, there are various interaction points, touch points between projects and operations. Uh, sorry, I lost the screen. Uh, between the people working on each project among them and also between various project managers. So they interact with each other, they share the, um, the dependencies and issues between each other and also the systems within the organization also interact. So, so the, the holistic system thinking uh, we have to we have to develop in ourselves that uh, being part of this team we are not part of one project we are part of a bigger organization and bigger organization has big responsibility so we share the responsibility uh, as a um, uh, as not only as project but as a big organization so that's part of the system and then we have to find a um, number of ways how we can uh, resolve this uh, spaghetti uh, of the complexity because each project brings its own um complexity so we have to untangle it we have to find number of ways to navigate through the complexity and find our way um to to, till, uh, to deliver the organizational uh, objective so not every project will be a uh, walk in a park a uh, piece of cake every project will bring its own complexity and it's my role that i need to be resilient enough i need to be committed enough that i need to come um i need to find uh, a way which leads me to uh, like navigating a ship and finding a best way to reach the uh, shore. So this is how we need to navigate towards the complexity. And then the principle uh, about collaboration, like we need to, as uh, servant leaders in the organization, we need to create an atmosphere that is a collaborative atmosphere where everyone uh, feels uh, uh, without any barrier, they can talk freely, transparent, transparently, and they can, there should not be any bureaucracy. So it should be free collaborative environment where project team interacts one-to-one, uh, -one, face to face. Um, Imagine, uh, imagine you don't need to take appointments to see someone. You just can walk in. You just can, uh, you just can talk. Um, so, so unlike the unlike the bureaucratic environment where you need to uh, find uh, find number of uh, uh, go through various processes to to get the signatory signatures for certain documents. So, it should be an open collaborative environment where uh, everyone is approachable. Everyone is uh, collaborating with each other and transparent. Then. It comes to um, situational leadership. Like I, being a leader, I need to demonstrate my leadership style, which depends on various situations I am in. So I need to demonstrate a directive leadership style when I am uh, uh, starting a project and everyone is looking towards me. Um, so what is this project all about? So I need to give them the direction why they are here. I need to tell them that each one of you has a job to do. So I need to give them the clarity needed. So I have to be a consultative, lead, consultative leader. Sometimes when the, the situation requires me to develop the consensus, then I need to become a democratic leader. So I need to shift my leadership style as per the situation requirement. So I need to demonstrate those leadership behaviors um, depending on which uh, time of the project I am in. Um, let's say in the beginning when there is chaos, there is no clarity, I need to be a directive leader. In the execution when there is, uh, uh, when there are, when stakes are high, when time is uh, also uh, a scarce, scarcity, then I may also become a directive leader. Uh, however, during the planning, I may become a consultative leader to take the estimates from the people to, to know various approaches about alternate ways of doing things. So I need to demonstrate these leadership behaviors. Then, each project has its own risk and we need to anticipate risks and also develop our risk responses. So uh, let's say we identified a risk that we may have shortage of material or equipment in the market, maybe after six months or two months or three months, if we are forcing that, we have to develop our mitigation strategy. That, okay, we have to find various suppliers, get them in, uh, contracted, and uh, so that we should have a number of options when the shortage will come in. So uh, if our responses are not working and we see that risks are not getting mitigated, we have to optimize our responses. So we have to revisit what is the optimum, uh, what is the current risk response that we have set aside. And if we see that, it will. It is not reduce, going to reduce the probability as well as the impact of the risk that is uh, coming. So we need to find another method that could reduce the probability and impact of the risk that we foresee. So we need to optimize our responses uh, from time to time. Uh, and, and engagement, just like collaboration, we have to find number of ways to uh, let people feel like they are part of the project. Like from top management to bottom, from anyone who is having a stake in this project, he has to feel like he has direct touch point with me, or maybe I have direct touch point with him. So I should 
be the one who should demonstrate the engagement like i should be engaging with each and every stakeholder on his preferred method maybe some people want me to engage with them face to face i will walk and say hello uh, maybe some people want me to give them weekly status report i will also share with them the weekly status report maybe some people prefer on call on phone on teams wherever i need to have engagement engaged community i need to engage with the stakeholders from time to time they are aware about the project status and i ensure that each one is not getting the surprises i should be always telling them the full picture transparently we are late we are late we are ahead of time we are ahead of time so everyone is very clear where we are as a moment about the project sales then uh tailoring tailoring means that one size does not fit all right these five fingers are not equal similarly each project will require you to tailor your approach towards management towards uh, tailor your communication when you are speaking with the generation let's say x you will communicate in different style if you are com com uh, communicating with millennials you may have different style of communication if you are com uh, uh, similarly if you are um, if you need if you need to manage various diverse nationalities let's say you need to tailor your approach uh, towards them and 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 uh, who else uh, would be the best Gigi could be the best one to describe uh, uh, tailoring based on the context especially when it comes to communication Gigi, would you like to chip in um you want me to yeah, yeah you you just can uh, can uh, from your experience can say something about uh, tailoring your communication style depending on oh. the audience yeah yeah well the communication style that you have to adopt to uh, as a project leader it's very important to effectively be able to communicate with the team first of all what is the uh, the scope of the project what's expected and then on an ongoing process uh, ensuring that everybody is aligned to the tasks that are required and this will also um, involve, you could say, considering the behavior, behavioral style of people and how you will communicate with them. Because some people, um, some project managers may be more direct in their approach, right? So they would straight away talk about the project and yeah. they may not be so empathetic, so friendly, or even, you know, consider any, any emotion towards their, their team. Oh. And there, there are some as well who are, uh, people oriented and they, they wanted to make sure that the team is comfortable with them. They are able to understand them clearly. Um, yeah. And at a certain point, it's more like the camaraderie is really very evident. Yes, true. I would say uh, let us. Uh, I mean, let let us close our lecture here because it's already about time, and we can come back to these principles uh, number eight till twelve. Uh, when, once we meet tomorrow. Um, yeah. And uh, from today's lecture, do you have any feedback? Do you like us to change our approach? Anything? Uh, please, 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 please. Yeah, George has something to say. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I am hearing. Please go ahead. I'm adding in a little bit about your question to Gigi about communication skills, especially with working with the team, if they're from ethnic cultures and accents and the ability to communicate well with that team. Being that project manager, to make your job a lot more easier when you're developing that team, having the skill of the disc, like Gigi trains with disc, the four birds, knowing if you're an owl, are you an eagle? What type of personality and behavior? If you, as that project manager, know the behaviors and the, you're able to communicate better because you're able to know which type of person is gonna react or respond to your communication skills. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Personality also matters. Yeah. True. And uh, it makes a lot of difference to achieve the results also. Yeah. This is your point, right? I lost your voice. Maybe you were speaking. <laughs>